I just did that because I was looking at some of my old videos and I noticed that I started every single one the exact same way, exact same tone, exact same voice, and that is boring. So that was my Mrs. Doubtfire, my Mrs. Doubtfire um, uh, greeting. Hello. Okay, I, I'm terrible at voices, so sorry about that. Just being silly. But today we are going to do another mixed media project. Um, I'm keeping it simple. This is super simple and really easy and it's so much fun. Um, I'm, we're going to be using cord and wire and beads and a focal and it's a really, really neat, neat project to make and so that we can make this lovely, lovely mixed media um, necklace. We've got our beads, we've got our wire wrapping, We've got our cord and I'm gonna use, um, uh, I'm using cotton cord. Um, it's coated cotton cord. It's really easy to use. You can use leather to do this as well. Heads up people, we're gonna be doing a lot more uh, leather wire combos because it really is nice for this time of year. For winter, it's really nice to have something a little bit different um, and really, really sturdy. So I'm gonna, be breaking out the wire cord, but we're starting with this nice cotton cord. You can use hemp cord, cotton cord, silk cord, anything for this. It's um, basically what we're going to do is knot the cord. You're gonna put as many or as few knots in it as you want and uh, wire wrap our beads and attach the whole thing and that's it. And we're, we're going to be using clamps on the back. Um, I've got these really neat little clamps. Ah! Um, back there. We're going to use these little clamps to hold our wires in. I don't know if you can see that. Very good. Let's see. Use my phone as a backdrop. There we go. So we're going to use um, these little clamps on the back. Just to hold all, hold our wires together. Let me get this off of here. I've got this nicely staged, and I'm going to take it apart so I can show you the back. Come off, come off, come off, come off, come off. There we go. So we're gonna have those nice little clamps on the back. We're going to make our own um, S clasp on the back. And this is long enough so that you really don't even need to, a clasp if you don't want to. You can just make a, a knot in the back if you would rather. But I just like the finished look of a clasp. I'm making, the one that I'm making today is going to be approximately um, 20 inches long. Maybe a little bit longer just because of the beads on the bottom, but the drop of the cord is going to be about 20 inches. This one, Actually, I take that back. It's about 22 inches. Um, the cord's 20 inches. The uh, beads um, that are dropping be below it are gonna add another two inches. This one is about 22 inches long. Um, and I thought I'd make this one just a little bit shorter just to have some variety. So you're gonna need your usual tools. Your there they are, your round nose pliers, flat nose pliers, and your cutters. You're gonna need some 20 gauge wire and some beads. And I'm going to use these beautiful red line stone beads. I think they're agate. I can get up there and show that, but I, I do. I think it's agate and they are lovely. I've been wanting to use them. Kind of marble, kind of marbleized marble beads. Oof, pretty, 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 pretty. And I'm going to use them with this cotton. I have some salmon colored cotton that goes beautifully with these beads. Isn't that awesome? 
and some taupe or ivory colored cotton. So those are the colors I'm going to use today. Let's bring it down to my other camera so that you can see what the heck I'm doing. And so just a little bit of housekeeping. We're gonna have our cord. We're gonna have our beads. We're gonna make split rings to hook everything together. So we'll be making our own split rings. And again, we'll be making our own uh, closure. So the first thing that you want to do uh, to, to determine is how long you want your necklace to be. And the way you're gonna be able to figure out how much cord you need is to determine how much um, space the knots take up. Um, every time you make a knot, it's going to take away from the length of your cord. And the best way to determine how much cord you need to accommodate your knots is to take a length of cord. This is just a piece of random cord. It, it depends on how um, thick your cord is as to how much space the knots will take up. So I suggest that you take a length of cord. I give myself at least four inches, make a knot, and then measure again. And if you only have three and a half inches left, that means it took you half an inch per knot. You're going to use half an inch per knot. And that way you'll know how much to cut. So if I want a 20 inch drop and my knots take half an inch each, and I want to make four, uh, four knots, then I need to measure out at least 22 inches. Because 22 inches, four knots, half an inch each, that's two inches subtracted. So I need to give myself 22 inches to accommodate for the knots so that I'll have 22, 20 inches left for the drop of my necklace. Ugh, enough math. Okay. Stay in school, kids. You will be using math for everything. I so too, and believe me, you use lots of math for that as well. Anybody who thinks that um, an artistic, uh, art, uh, an artistic career won't require any math, like an accountant, is very, very wrong. You're going to need it all through your life. So, with that depressing thought. <laughs> Let's get going. Okay, so what I've done is cut 25 inches of cord because I'm going to be knotting six inches of cord together. And each one of my knots takes approximately one and a half uh, inches. No, I'm wrong. Each one of my knots takes about three quarters of an inch. This is not very big uh, cord and it's just cotton, so it ties pretty tightly. But each one of my knots takes about three quarters of an inch each. So I'm gonna make two knots instead of three, like I did on this one. I'm just gonna make two. So that's going to knock out an inch and a half. If I've measured out 25 inches of cord, and I knock uh, and I fold it in half because it's going to be folded. That's going to give me 12 and a half inches on each side, one and a half inches of, of um, cord missing because of the knot is going to take it down to what did I say? 12 and a half, 12, 11 inches. So that's going to leave me 11 inches on each side. Let me make sure I am right. 25 inches. Folding in half, that's 12 and a half inches, one and a half inches per knot coming off, that's subtracting one and a half inches um, per knot, that's three inches. Am I telling that right? I think that's right. Yes, and that knocks it down to, oh my glasses so I can see what the heck I'm doing. 25 inches, 12 and a half. Yeah, that takes it down too, because I want it a little more than 18 inches long. That's my 
that's my usual go-to. But because we're wearing collared sweaters and things like that for the winter, I wanted it to be a little bit longer and uh, then, but uh, able to carry over into the spring as well when you're still wearing things that have collars on them. And it'll work just fine when you're not wearing collars. But I just wanted something that was not going to have to be put away for the winter months. So now that I've got all of that straightened out, what we're going to do is take our cords, spread them out. I've given myself two ivory colored cords, two colored cords, whatever you want to call this cover color, and uh, one salmon color. And I'm going to bring all of the ends together. I'm going to bring three ends together. And I'm going to lay that off to the side. So now what we're the first thing that we're going to do is make our split rings. That's what's going to link everything together. So I'm going to show you how to make a split ring. And what I would suggest is that you just keep it on the spool in order to do this. Because if you say, OK, each split ring takes about two inches, you need to give yourself another half an inch just to be able to have something to hold on while you're making your rotations, in which case you're going to have to cut off a whole half an inch of wire every time you make a split ring. And how wasteful is that? I don't like to waste. So what I'm going to do is leave it on the spool and just make my split rings from there. So what I want is to make sure that they're a good enough size to accommodate my cords and my eye pins that are going to hold the, uh, the beads on when I, when I put the beads on. So what I want to do is go down about halfway down my pliers. And again, this is your choice as to how big you want or need your split rings to be. Now I'm going to grab my wire with my pliers around halfway down my pliers. Make sure nothing's sticking out the back. My wire should be firmly ensconced in between the teeth or the jaws of the pliers, and I'm going to start making rotations. So I'm going to start making a loop. I want to make sure that the tail of my wire is drifting towards the end of my pliers, the tip of my pliers. And I'm going to rotate until I have a full rotation, then I'm going to keep going until I have two full loops. I'm gonna take that off my pliers and I'm gonna cut. And I like to separate my wires. See if you can see that. It's a little blurry. Let's see if I can, is that okay. I like to separate my wire before I cut so I don't accidentally cut through one of the loops that I don't want to. I cut the one closest to me, the one closest to the spool, and there's my split ring. Here we go. It just looks like it's all right. Is it just me? I don't know how to make it any less blurry. I hope you can see that. Anyway, there's my split ring. Oh, that's better. Just don't put it so close. The camera is apparently nearsighted. Okay, so there's my split ring. And I'm going to need six of those. I'm going to need one to go on the cord, each cord, so that's two. I need one that's going to link together this, my small beads and my large beads. And it depends on how many beads you decide to do. You might want to do more beads. It's up to you. But I need one to link the beads together on each side. So that's two. Um, two to link the cords to the beads. That's four. And I need two on the back link 
my closure. Okay, so I need six of these lovely split rings. And oh, lo and behold, I've already made a bunch of them. Yay! So I just showed you how to do it. So you know how to make your split rings. Let's go on to the next part of our program. And that is putting our cord together. So I'm gonna take the ends of my cord and I'm going to put them together on one side. Make sure the tips are as close to matching as possible. Here we go. And then I'm going to take one of my split rings and slide it over the ends of my cord. Now I'm gonna let it drop down until it's in the center of my cord and I'm gonna bring all of my ends together. So there's one side, tips are together. Other side, tips are together. And just let that jump ring drop down to the center of my cord. So there we go. And now I'm going to make my first knot. So I'm gonna bring all my cords together and make sure they're, try to make sure they're not gaping too much. You wanna kind of get it as tight as you can and nice and even as you can get. And if you wanna arrange it, for instance, if I want my salmon colored cord to be in, the, in between the two ivory cords on each side, I can do that. It depends on how you want it. They're all gonna to come together in the end. Then you need to decide how far from the bottom you want your knot to be. I'm eyeballing it because it doesn't really matter to me. Well, actually it does matter because I've already made one of these, so I need the other one to match. So here's the other one, ta-da! So I wanna make sure that they both match. So I'm gonna bring them together. That's where I want my knot to be because I want it to match the other side. First one's easy because you can do it any way you want. And then the second one is the one you have to be fussy about. So now I'm gonna make my knot and this is just a plain old ordinary over, overhand knot folks, nothing special. No gadgets that you need to use, just an overhand knot. Wrap your cords around your finger Bring all of the ends through the loop. And I'm gonna check and make sure it matches my other one. And I'm gonna adjust my knot, pull my knot until it gets as close to the same place as my other one, as my other cord. Get a little further down. I don't want to pull it completely tight until I have it matching my other cord. The distance between the knot itself and the bottom. There we go. All right, let's check this out. Check it out, check it out. And there we go. There's my knot. And now I'm going to do my second knot. Same thing. Straighten them out as much as I can. Check the distance between the other cord that I've got here. And let's go. Make my knot. Wrap it around my finger, bring all of the ends through, just feed them through my loop. Check 
have to make sure they're all there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And start pulling my knot, but before I complete it, I wanna check and make sure I can see that this is a little longer. So I wanna push my knot down until they look like they're meeting about the same distance apart and just adjust it until it looks the way I want. Pretty good, nice. And now I just make some little adjustments so that it looks aesthetically, as aesthetically perfect as I can get. This is a very organic piece, so there it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It just needs to be pretty. So there we go. And now, also using my other one, and a measure to make sure they're the same length. Because now what I need to do is check the ends, make sure they're as close to the same length as possible, and then cut off whatever is too long. So I'm gonna put this here, check it against my other cord, And I'm gonna cut off the end to match this one. You can also measure. You can measure your other cord just to see where you wanna cut. I can see I need to cut about that much. And I'm gonna be absolutely certain of that because I don't want it to be too short. Looks pretty darn good. Okay, there's my end. And yeah, there we go. And that's another reason to make sure that you measure out in the beginning and give yourself an extra inch or so because look, I'm gonna have to cut off a good half an inch of, of cord, which of course affects my final, my final length. Now you can just cut this off with a pair of scissors. Again, this is coated cotton, so it's easy to clip with scissors or with my cutters, either way, whatever works for you. Until I have a nice, even set of cords. Let's do that one more time. Not bad, but I think it can be a little bit shorter. Yeah, I think it needs to be a little tiny shorter. About another quarter of an inch or so. First cut, it's always a good idea to cut too long because then you can go back and remeasure. And if it's too long, you can cut it off. If it's too, too short, oh no, you have to start all over. And that, is not so enjoyable because then what are you going to do with the other one? Get off of there. Yeah. So now I am ready to put my clamp on. Here we go. Okay. So now I'm ready to put my clamp on. Bring all my ends together. Nice and even, tips together. And here's my clamp. I don't know if you can see that it's got little teeth. Oh. It's got little teeth on it. 
that will grip my cords. So now let's get those on there. Let's get all these little excess out of the way. I like to lay it down. I think it's a little easier that way. You can see what I'm doing. I can slide that into my little clamp. And then I can just push it down. I don't push it down all the way because I want to make sure everything's in there. They're all in there. Very nice. And I can squeeze it again, checking. See, I have a little piece sticking out on the side there. I don't want that. Put those back in on the sides. You can use your finger, you can use the tip of your pliers, whatever works better. I just like to look, make sure I give it a good check. Everything's in. And then I'll take my flat nose pliers, which is probably the only time we're going to use them. And I'm going to squish that closed. And again, the teeth are gripping the cord. Squish that down. Nice and firm. And there we go. Ta-da. There are my cords, all ready to be attached to my beads. Yay. Neat, huh? Okay, <laughs> yay. Okay, we're halfway there, yay. Okay, now it's time to put together our focal. So now what I like to do, I'm gonna make simple, yeah, just very simple, um, loops on the small ones and then we're going to wire wrap this guy right here so the way i determine how much i need for simple loops is i will just take my wire and put it through the bead give myself about a half an inch on each side and that way i know I'll have enough for my simple loop. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make the, no, I'm gonna put my bead on. Go ahead and make the loop on one side. And I didn't direct you through that, my bad. I will do that on the other side. Got my loop. Slide my bead up. There's one, my one loop on there. And I'm going to cut off on the other side, give myself about half an inch. And I'm eyeball, eyeballing it. You can always actually measure this out. Give myself about half an inch of wire. And Come back here. <sighs> These temperamental beads. Okay, and now I'm gonna make my other loop. Now the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a bend. I want my loops to be going in the same direction. I don't want one, this one to be flat, one going right to left, and the other one to be going up and down. I want them to be going the same direction. So I'm going to give my wire, the tail of my wire, I'm going to give it a little bend just above uh, the top of my bead, like so. And then I'm going to take my pliers. And if you're not sure how big you made your other loop, just feed it onto the pliers, and that tells you where to go. So I need to slide my um, wire down about a third of the way down my pliers in order to achieve the same size loop that I have on the other side. I'm gonna grip my wire, third of the way down the pliers, and I'm gonna rotate. Now you wanna make sure there's nothing sticking out the back. 
Your wire should be firmly encased in between the plier jaws. Jaws, jaws. <laughs> and then you want to start making a rotation or a loop. And I'm using this stuff that's supposed to not want mar your wire. So it gets a little, it's kind of rubbery and the wire gets stuck on it. So sorry for the, all of the manipulations. There's my loop. There's my other loop. And as you can see, they're both going the same direction. So there's my one simple loop bead. I'm going to do the other one, slide it on, grab my wire around a third of the way down my pliers, rotate until I have a nice loop. There we go, nice closed loop. Then I'm going to Bend back my loop until my wire until my loop is upright. And by upright, I mean I want a straight edge, straight edge of wire and the loop settled on top of that. If you can see that. There we go. Everything's twisted. Come on, work with me here. There we go. And now I'm gonna to go to the other side, give myself about half inch of wire. Clip. Bend my wire back until it's at right angles with the bead. Again, check it out. It's yeah, a third of the way down my pliers. and rotate until I have a nice closed loop. Get out of there. There we go. And now look at that. One of my loops is not going the same way as the other one. This one's going this way. That one's going that way. How do I fix that? Oh no! All I have to do is grab my loops and twist until they're both facing the same direction. This is very soft wire. It's very malleable. It will do what you want. So now they're facing the same direction. See that? Nice, neat, and tidy. So now I've got my two small beads all looped up. And it's ready for my big bead. Now it just depends on what you want to do this with this. This is such a beautiful bead that I don't want to do too much stuff to it. And because I'm using silver wire, if I was using something like copper or that, oh my gosh, I'd play with that a little more. But because I'm using silver, I'm just going to do a nice, simple wrapped uh, loop on this. Very simple. So what I want to do is, again, slide my bead on because I need to know how much I need. And let's get that little thing pop out of there. Let's straighten this out a little better. So in order to make a wrapped loop, I like to give myself at least an inch and a half of wire. Two inches if I think I want to play with it a little bit and do some kind of decorative something, but I don't think I'm doing that with this. I think I'm just going to make a nice wrapped loop. So I'm going to give myself about an inch and a half and I'm eyeballing it again. I should be a good teacher and measure. Okay, so I'm going to give myself about an inch and a half of wire on both sides. Just an inch and a half there. Inch and a half on the other side. Get down there. Okay, and that's how much I need. Let me cut that off. Get these as even as possible on each side. 
And as long as I have a good inch and a half, I'm good. So, there we go, there's an inch and a half. I'm gonna go with the inch and a half on this side and this side has, yep, inch and a half. There's my half, a little bit more than an inch and a half. And so now what I'm gonna do is bend it. I'm gonna bend it back on one side, I'm gonna bend it back on the other side, and I'm going to make a nice wrapped loop. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna get down here, right above my B. I'm gonna make my wrapped loop, bring it back about, I'm gonna stick with a third of the way down my pliers, which I've been doing for most of my uh, loops and uh, split rings and things like that. And we're going to just be consistent. I'm going to bring, grab my, uh, use my pliers to grab my wire. I'm going to bring the tail end of my wire over my pliers until it's hanging down the side of my bead. Come out. So I've got a kind of a half loop. Let's slide that back in there. And I'm going to bring the wire up and under my pliers until I have a nice little loop. So there's my loop. And I'm going to grip my, I can either leave my wire, my pliers inside the wire and wrap, or I can grab it on the side and wrap. It's entirely up to you which way works better for you. So I'm holding this on the side of my loop and I'm just going to wrap the tail of my wire around the neck of my wire between the loop and my pliers. So there we go. I gave it about, I'm gonna give it a full three wraps around. And then I'm just going to clip this tail off. And just like I did with the split rings, I like to lift it away from the other wraps so that I can cut it close but not risk scratching the other wires. And I like to turn this little tail either down into something or away from you. If you turn it away from you, the wire can fly across the room and then you have to search for it. And if anybody else is in the room, they could get hurt because it, it's uh, flying like a flying needle. So I like to turn it down in something. In this case, I have this nice well that I can turn this down into. And clip. Where'd it go? There it is. Yay. Didn't go anywhere because I trapped it. Okay. So now that I've got this little tail down here, I want to push it down as close to the other wires as I can get so it won't snag on anything. There. A little bit more. I'm very persnickety about this too. There. Okay. Now we have a nice wrapped loop. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Take my pliers, grab the wire, slide it down about a third of the way down my pliers, wrap the tail over the top of my pliers and down the side. Then I'm gonna turn my pliers up until they're um, horizontal to the B. Bring the wire up and under 
my pliers until I have a nice loop. And I'll show you, take that off. So I have a nice loop. I showed you how to do it while holding the side. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it while you've got the pliers inside the loop. Same thing, you're just gonna wrap it around, wrap the wire between the pliers and the bead. I'm gonna give it three full loops, just like I did on the other side. That's two and a half, one, and a, one more. So now I have a nice wrap with a it's got a cute little cap on the top. Isn't that adorable? So now I'm gonna separate that wire out a little bit, clip it off. Let's get my trusty well together again. Get there, yeah. These spools are good for lots of things. This is one of them. Clip it off. Gotcha. Put that to the side. Snug down my wire, my little tip so it doesn't scratch on anything, particularly my precious clothes. And there we go. There is my bead, my nicely wrapped bead. And if, you're, if your loops are not going the same direction, you just do the exact same thing that we did the last time. You just turn it, hold one end, hold the other end and twist until they're both going the same direction. There they are, very nice. And now I can link them all together. Ta-da! Let's do it. That is where these guys come in. So we're gonna link them together with split rings. And all you need to do for that is to kind of bring, split, separate the end from the ring, the center part, slide on. There's two ways you can do it. You can do it this way, or you can do it an easier way. You can slide this on the closed, the closed ring, if I can get this to cooperate. Slide it on there. Bring it all the way around till it goes down to the center. There we go. And then close the ring. On the other side, I can just open this simple. And this is why I made a simple one on one side. And then just slide that onto my split ring. Close it back up. And voila. Nice. Now let's do the other side. Let's open up that split ring. Separate the end. There we go. Slide that on my closed loop. Rotate it until it goes all the way around and into the center of my split ring. And then close it up. There we go. And then attach it to the other side. My other simple loop, open that up, slide it on my split ring, close it. And there we go. There is our centerpiece. Now, what we have to do is attach it to our cord. So what we're going to do is open the other side, our other, our other simple loop. And just 
just as a, a word of caution, you don't want to pull your ring apart. You don't want to unfurl your ring. What I like to do, or well, the best way to do it, is to open it up from on the side like it's a flip top so that there's just a little bit of a separation in there. And then I can slide it on my split ring and just push it back together again. That way I have not misshapen my loop and it goes back together very nicely. And let's go to the other side. Again, I'm gonna flip that up to the side, not pulling it apart. We're flipping it to the side there. Slide it on my split ring. Close it back up. And we have a necklace. Isn't that lovely? That's so pretty. I love these beads. Now, the last thing that we want to do is attach our split rings to our clamps. So again, we're going to open the end of that up. Off camera, sorry. I'm going to slide it on my clamp, rotate it till it's all the way down into the center. And close it. Close that back, put my rings back together. There we go. Make sure my rings are together there. Go to the other side and do the same thing. Open out my end. Slide it on my clamp. And just rotate. until it's down the center, center of my ring. And you don't have to use the pliers to do this. I'm trying to use the pliers so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't know how well that's working. Here we go. And then close the rings together. And there we go with that. Now all that's left is to make my S hook to fasten it. So all we need is about two inches of wire for that. There we go. Just cut off two inches of wire. We're gonna make a teeny tiny little loop on one end. If I can find my pliers, where are they? Get another pair. Whatever. That's odd. They were just here. <laughs> oh, there they are. Okay. So I just need to make a tiny little loop on one end of my wire. And I'm gonna go about three quarters of the way around and then I smash it close the rest of the way so I can make the loop as small as possible. There we go. Let's have a nice little tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny loop. And then I'm gonna take my pliers 
I'm going to slide it down all the way to the very back of my pliers. So my wire is all the way to the back of my pliers. Here's my little loop. I'm going to slide it all the way down to the back, just under the base of the loop. I'm going to clamp down. And then I'm going to bring the bottom of my loop is, is going towards me. So I'm gonna bring the wire, the tail of my wire away from me and over the top. And once I get over the top, I'm gonna to stop as soon as it touches the head of my wire. So that when I take it out, I have a little shepherd's hook. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna make another loop on this side it's going to be, the loop is going to get, be going towards the uh, shepherd's hook here. So again, I like to use the ones without the gummy stuff on it because I can get a better tip. Make a tiny little loop, just grabbing the tip of my wire with the tip of my pliers, making a little tiny loop. I go about three quarters of the way around. Then I switch to my flat nose pliers and give it a squish. And yes, squish is a technical term. <laughs> Look it up. And John would be proud of it. Okay. Nice tiny loop. Grab my pliers again. Slide that loop down my pliers to the very base. Then I squeeze just under the head of the loop. And again, I've got my, the bottom of my loop is, is going towards me. So the tail of my pliers is going to go away from me around and across the top of the pliers. And boom. Shepherd took S clasp. There we go. And there's my clasp. Yay. So in order to strengthen this a little bit, I like to take my little mallet and give it a little pounding. You don't have to kill it. You probably can't hear that because I think the computer doesn't like the loud shocking noise and it shuts off the audio. But So I don't talk while I'm doing it. And again, you don't have to, you don't have to kill it. Just give it a few taps, a few good taps. So that will kind of strengthen the wire a little bit. And there's my clasp, all finished. Nice, neat and tidy. Now all I have to do is attach it. And again, this is my favorite kind of class because it's so versatile. It doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, you can put it on, you fasten it on both sides. So I'm gonna put on my clasp. Put it on the other side. And there we go. There's our necklace. How is that for sim the simplest thing in the world? It's so easy to do. So pretty. I love this. I love simplicity. And anybody can wear this and it's just gorgeous. So that is our tutorial for today. I hope you liked it. There's our necklace. Oh, it's really, let's see if we can get a better, a better view. I hope you like this because this, this came out really well. It's kind of hard to see with this 
color. Oh, I know. I'll put it on me. Why not? Here we go. Here's our piece. Straighten that out a little bit. Here we go. Sorry, I'm not getting a, a good view here. I want to show it to you a little bit better, but this is our piece. That's better. There it is. There's our piece that we've made today. Our nice knotted cord wire wrapped focal bead necklace. I have to think of a name of that. I don't know what it is yet. Oh, I love this. I love this stone. I wish I could get a better picture. And there we go. I think block out some of the light and you can see a little bit better what's going on in this stone. Isn't that lovely? Ooh, I like it. Anyway, that is our piece for today. Super simple, super easy. You should be able to make that in like half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will make this. I hope you will show me what you made. I keep adjusting the light to see if I can get it to look better. I, I hope you will show me what you've made and give me some feedback. Let me know what's happening. What is happening in the world? Is this real life? Anyway, I think things are looking up. We should be back to some semblance of normal soon, I hope. Next few months or so, sometime in 2021. We need a vaccine. Anyway, that's it. Enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed this. I probably won't see you again until after Christmas or vice versa. You won't see me again until after Christmas. I think this is our last one for the year. So I hope you have a great, great holiday season, whether it be Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa. Enjoy. Have a happy new year. And I will see you in 2021 and all the best. Enjoy life and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.